Come on, you guys know. Oh, remember, like, wait, put in your thinking caps. Let's go back, right? Let's go back to the future. Let's go back to March of 2020 when the government said, oh, we got to, we got to, we got to add some stability to the markets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take $4 trillion and we're going to dump it into the markets to shore things up. See, we got to tickle the balls of corporations. <laughs> that's really what they were doing. Sorry, I hate to get crude here, but that's basically what they wanted to do. So, Maxwell Alejandro Frost. He flaked on a lot of student bars. Flaked. And he's getting a lot of heat for it. So it's not looking good for him. So let me just let me just go to this because I think this is important. All right. Let me, let me share my screen. Oh boy. Maxwell, Maxwell, Maxwell. Mm -mm -mm. All right, people. This is Maxwell Alejandro Frost. Now, this congressperson is... This is my district. He recently flaked on student loan debt. Let's take a look. This is from the Debt Collective. It says Maxwell Alejandro Frost voted to restart your student loan repayments. Fight back. Fill out the student debt release tool to demand Biden cancel your student loan debt today. So they have him here, right? She's in for the whole world to see. Now, as far as a lot of people are concerned when it comes to the student loan debt uh, issue, there's a lot of people, especially on the left, that think that the cancellation of student loan debt is a big issue because you have a lot of people who are educated that have went to do higher education and they've had to go into debt in order to receive that higher education and now they feels like they're being punished because the debts are greater than the loan that they took out to go to school so i just want to share first of all the res response by what uh representative frost said because he responded to this tweet. Yes, he re responded. And let me share this with you guys. He says, responded to this in July. Guess because this tweet did good numbers, they wanted to tweet it again. What's disappointing is that I'm not, I am one of the few members calling for full cancellation. More info here. And he goes to a that he made back in July. He said, I'm fighting for debt relief. Just this morning, I testified to the Department of Education. Having didn't want the payments to unpause, but the Republicans, but the Republicans held Congress hostage with the threat of our country defaulting on payments from Social Security, Medicare, and many other important programs. The payments on pausing in September were part of the deal cut. I hate that we had the deal in the first place, but decided to vote for it in the end to avoid the default. Multiple things can be true at the same time. We have a real opposition in this fight and I wouldn't count myself as part of that. I appreciate the question. And this is from response 
to them saying that Representative Maxwell Frost voted to unpause your student loan payments, right? So as far as Maxwell Frost saying that, well, the student loan payments that were supposed to unpause, they basically said it's either that or we stop the government shutdown. Now, let me ask you, does that sound like an excuse or is that a valid reason to you? To be honest, the whole debt ceiling issue is a farce because the debt ceiling is just political theater, in my opinion. It's just an approval to spend more. So let me share this with you guys. Because this is why I love the independent left media. Because they actually will call things out and show how some of these things are really just a farce. Right? So let me share this. All right, so let's share the screen. All right. So this is from Second Thought. And the title is Why the Government Has Infinite Money. Interesting, right? So let me see. 136. And we'll start here. Let's go. Oh, wait, let me enlarge. Spending, which is a very familiar theme in American politics. With the 2024 election season starting, like every cycle, one of the things you'll inevitably hear is the how are you going to pay for that question? Like with the debt ceiling stuff, this question will never come up for defense spending, obviously. That money is special and totally different and unrelated and stop worrying about it. We've got hospitals to bomb. Come on now. But over the next 14 or so months, every single progressive candidate proposing universal health care will, without fail, get scrutinized for their budgeting. Despite the fact it's estimated that universal health care would save Americans $450 billion a year, and less importantly, tens of thousands of lives. But none of that matters. What matters is if it would create a budget deficit. More money going out than money coming in in taxes, and therefore more debt. And this sucks. This selective scrutiny for progressive spending, I mean. It creates doubt in a lot of people's minds about the viability of good projects like free health care. And this doubt rarely ever gets re resolved by the truth. The truth being that the government can absolutely afford these programs. More than afford. The government has a long, long list of good reasons to spend money like this, and almost no reason not to, as you'll see throughout this video. These questions about government spending create a lot of doubt, though, and keep us from embracing progressive policies we believe in, including me, for a while. Social programs like free healthcare always sounded good to me, but they also sounded expensive. And for a long time, constantly being told that the government's spending so much already that the debt is in trillions of dollars made me believe we actively needed to give up on stuff like free healthcare and scale back our spending. And in short, no we don't. And in long, that's what the rest of the video is for. What I'd like to explain today is that government spending isn't a bad thing. There's no debt your kids will have to pay back, nor is it reckless spending by well-intentioned but ultimately kinda careless bureaucrats. We can afford to pay for social programs like universal healthcare, and welfare, and new infrastructure, and high-speed rail, and sustainable energy. Because government spending is A, not funded by taxes, so more government spending doesn't mean less money in your pocket, and B, there is no hard limit on government spending so long as the government spends money on something. The real So, let's talk about this. So, 
if student debt, if student loan debt is forgiven, then let's think about with this premise, how if we forgive it, it won't hurt the government, but it will, it will be, benefit borrowers. Think about all the extra money that would get spent in the economy if they didn't have to return this money back to the government. Just think about it. See, the debt ceiling is a manufactured issue to give us the facade of scarcity. To make us think that we can't do the things we need for the people, but we can do all the yummy things for corporations. We can fund war in insane amounts, but we dare not cancel student loan debt for millions of Americans because we need to gatekeep education. How much student debt were we talking? 1.77 trillion. That's how much student debt there is. If canceling that debt harms the government, then what about when the government dumped $4 trillion in stimulus in 2020? Come on, you guys know. Oh, remember, like, wait, put in your thinking caps. Let's go back, right? Let's go back to the future. Let's go back to March of 2020. When the government said, oh, we got to, we got to, we got to add some stability to the markets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 4 trillion and we're going to dump it into the markets to shore things up. So we got to tickle the balls of corporations. <laughs> that's really what they were doing. Sorry, I hate to get crude here, but that's basically what they wanted to do. So let's let's share because you know tweets are forever. By the way, that video for from Second Thought is pretty based, and I recommend that you guys uh, you know get that video a complete watch through. Uh, actually, let me let me share that in the chat just so you guys can uh, so you guys have access to it, so you guys can watch it after mine. YouTube. Okay. So let me share this because everybody was talking about this back in 2020. So only three years ago. V's then numerous said breaking Congress to pass Bill Monday allowing the Federal Reserve to issue four tr 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 trillion in liquidity for pandemic relief. I had to be careful. 12, 18, 24 zeros, four followed by 24 zeros to be printed. Whoa, whoa. Remember, remember Blossom? But Joey used to say, whoa. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Four trillion dollars. Four, four, four trillion dollars that's four thousand billion dollars and yet and yet did we are we in some type of horrid state right now country-wise as far as the government saying, oh my God, we're broke. Is the government broke in some way for taking, for, for creating that $4 trillion and then dumping it into the markets for stimulus? Has the House, the Senate, and the Federal Reserve suddenly burned down in some way, shape, or form? No, they're still there. And yet, we can't cancel 
seven trillion. Let's uh, give it. Let's give or take one point eight trillion dollars in student loan debt. We can't can't there. Can't do that. You see, this is really a false choice in my. We have to raise the debt ceiling, or we have to pay. We have to continue to pause on student loan debt repayments. We can do both, actually. We don't really need to raise the debt ceiling. It's just an arbitrary number that we agree. And it really isn't the debt. It's just the amount of money that the U.S. government actually puts into circulation. <laughs> That's all it really is. See, here's the thing. When and you, because you literally make the money. That's like me taking. That's like me taking this pen, putting it on some paper, and saying, "This is JB's money," and then I can pay you to do whatever the hell I want with that piece of paper that I print it on. All right, I want you to do this job for me. And then I will give you some of these. And if you do this job for me. And so there's this scarcity. It's like, oh my God, we're going to be in debt. And our kids are going to be in debt for a thousand years if we spend this much more. But in reality, how can you be in debt when you're the one that creates the money? Because people are like, people are like, oh, well, we can just, you know, tax the government. Uh, I'm sorry, tax the pe tax the rich people more. Number one, the people who have all, all this money is through exploitation. So therefore, they don't deserve to have that money because that money is stolen, especially from surplus labor. So tax, when it comes to making it so that we don't really need to increase taxes at all. We just need to increase spending so that the people have all the services that they need. And we can actually reallocate some of those funds, especially from the military budget, because the military budget is overly bloated, but nobody really wants to talk about it because they are held hostage by the military industrial complex. It's true. It's true. Right? Let's get into this. Let's show let's share. Let, let's go further. Did I? Yes, I did. Okay. Let me share this article with you guys. Um a lot of people seem to have short term memories regarding things like this about what the government can and can't do. It's like the government does it right in your face of what it can and can't do, but then and they will manipulate and go, well, we can't do that. You just did. Look, Congress has already approved $4 trillion in pandemic relief. Here's what happened to it. This was back in February of 2021. Oh, I don't know if I can play that. But it says Congress has authorized nearly $4 trillion in spending over the past year to help address the economic crisis caused by the pandemic. But only about $3 trillion of it has been spent. Roughly a third of that money went directly to struggling families through stimulus checks, expanding unemployment payments, and food stamps. That leaves about $1 trillion that hasn't been dispersed yet, even as President Joe Biden is calling Congress to approve another $1.9 trillion in pandemic relief package. Administration officials say the risk of doing little is far greater than the risk of going too big. While Republican lawmakers, and at least one well-known Democratic economist, Larry Summers, 
are concerned about the price tag of Biden's plan. A group of 10 GOP senators have proposed a $618 billion package, which would narrow the number of people eligible for stimulus pay payments and provide less school funding than the Biden plan because, well, they are happy that just want people to suffer because they didn't they didn't they didn't exploit people like other people did it says much of the one trillion dollar previously uh, authorized but as yet unspent funds are scheduled to be used over time and only smart portion will be available will never be spent according to committee committee for a responsible federal budget a fiscal watchdog group tracking the spending so here it hasn't had yet gone out the door about 500 billion dollars left from, from march of 2020 so basically, the money's there. And you really don't need to go, well, we don't have the money to be able to cancel it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Y'all just don't want to. And it's not like you're forcing some company, you know, it's like, you guys are the federal government. These federal backed student loans can literally be canceled. Student debt cancellation could be a stimulus for millions of borrowers to ease the economy. Resuming this debt will bring even more pain to workers and will make things worse for us. So let's go back to this other this other tweet because i think this is also another salient point that we should also focus in on because a lot of times people just automatically think well we just if you you know if you give this money to people then it's going to harm us no it's not the u.s government's pandemic aid to total $6 trillion, including $2 trillion from Congress and $4 trillion from the Federal Reserve. So that's from Josh Cap. So that just goes to show and solidify my point that the money is there. If they wanted to cancel it, they can cancel it. They can cancel it completely, but they don't want to. And I'll get into why that they don't want to in a second. Here's a question though. Why isn't Congressman Frost calling out Biden for not canceling student loan debt via the education secretary? And why is, isn't he calling out the farce that is the debt ceiling? That's my question. Because he could, but he won't. So let's go here. Because, I mean, if I were him, that's the first thing I would do is I say, this is all a, a, a political ploy. This is all a game. But people like him. Oh my God. This thing automatically starts playing. Okay. Let's play. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage, baby. All right, so this is from More Perfect Union. Great channel. I recommend that you guys subscribe to them. They do great work. Let's continue. Let's go. It says how Biden can cancel your student debt. I'm, Let's go. I'm going to talk about one simple question. Is it legal for President Biden to cancel student debt? The answer is yes. He can do it today without any other action by Congress. Let me explain why. Imagine you lend me $20. It's your $20. You can ask me to pay it back in full, in half, or not at all. Student debt cancellation works the same way. When someone takes out a federal student loan, they're borrowing money from the government. And the Constitution gives Congress the authority to control property of the government, such as debts owed to it. When Congress gave the Secretary of Education the authority to make or back student loans, it also gave the secretary the broad and unrestricted power to cancel or write down that debt. This power was established under the Higher Education Act in 1965. 
That law gives the Secretary of Education the authority to compromise, waive, or release any right, title, claim, lien, or demand, however acquired. The Secretary also has the authority not simply to compromise debt, but to modify a student loan to zero. Secretary Betsy DeVos actually used this authority to cancel out a limited amount of student debt. Now, it's important to understand the purpose of the Higher Education Act. It was to make the benefits of higher education widely available, especially to those who otherwise couldn't afford it. Nobody else but the federal government was willing to lend to people with no credit history, no means, and only the chance at a bright future. But we decided to do it because education is so but the intent was not what we're seeing now, worsening the racial wealth gap, driving up costs, reducing affordability and access, and triggering a repayment crisis. The nation today has a $1.7 trillion student debt burden owed to the federal government by about 43 million Americans. At the Project on Predatory Student Lending, we represent over a million student borrowers who were cheated by for-profit colleges. And this is an industry that aggressively targets and scams people who are looking for jobs and careers in order to get its hands on federal student loan dollars. And their priority is enrollment, not education. We see how defaulting on student debt can cause poor credit, food insecurity, homelessness, inability to pay household debt, barriers to employment, and mental and physical health issues. It so you see that this is more than just, uh, oh, well, they borrow money, so they should be able to pay it back, blah, 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 blah. This is literally causing issues regarding health, housing, food, all types of different securities that we need in order to survive. Because those of you who are Gen X and millennials, right? What were we told way back in the day? I'm talking about 20 years ago, right? Remember the movie Accepted with Justin Long? What did his father in the movie say? He said, if you want a good life, you go to college. We all were told that. We were told if we want to have a good life, if we want to be a productive member of society, you had to go to college and by any means necessary, even if you have to go into debt. Because if you go into debt, then you'll make enough money and you can pay it off easy because you'll be making more money. See? Now look. Now look at the rest of us. Because... By the way, I didn't go to college. Why? Because I saw my own mama going to student loan debt and she went to and she went to college back in the 60s. In the 70s. She was back in she was college. Wait, early 70s she was in college. And she still has student loan debt. And her student loan debt was like 1500 bucks. Right? Now you have people who are my contemporaries that are sitting there with 60, 70, 80, $90,000 in student loan debt that can never pay off. So we were told, we were told as a generation that if you want a better life, you better go to college, even if it means going into student loan debt. And we did. And now we're becoming more screwed over than ever, ever. And now you got some people getting mad at us for wanting some relief because we were taken advantage of. You took advantage of some 17, 18 and 19 year olds by making them sign documents, putting them into extreme debt. It's crazy because Some people are like, oh, no, 16-year-olds can't vote even if they work because, well, 16-year-old can't think. And yet you guys are sitting here putting 17, 18, and 19-year-olds in $100,000 in student loan debt. So the math ain't math in here. It's not. 
So this is the system. And then people were like, well, you signed a contract. Yeah, they signed a contract. But guess what? Anybody remember No Mermaid, right? Why was Ursula so bad? Why was she the bad one? Why, why does, do people see her as evil? Because she took advantage of a young girl and had her sign a contract without her daddy present. And that contract costed her her voice. Right? Remember that? And even when her daddy tried to, tried to rip up the contract, he used his trident to shoot it down. It was null and void. Couldn't do it. And guess what? Her daddy ended up having to pay for it too. Right? But why do we look at Ursula? Because Ariel signed the contract. Right? But why was Ursula so demonized? Come here. Because she was a loan shark. She manipulated Ariel. You see, when you look at these student loan and student debt companies, you have to look at them the same way. They're loan sharks. So why are we making excuses for loan sharks? It doesn't make sense to do that. It's usury. That's what it is. Extreme usury. It holds people back in their decisions to get married, have children, or to do certain kinds of jobs that we as a country need doing. And this burden impacts the whole family, the whole community, the whole economy, not just the loan bearer. But we've also seen how debt cancellation can liberate Americans and their families. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has paused federal student loan payments through September 2021. This has freed up households in this pandemic to spend money and help keep our economy going. And the ability to do that falls under the same authority to modify or outright cancel debts. In these examples and others, the law is clear. President Biden has the legal authority to cancel student debt. And doing so is not an end, but a beginning of necessary change we need to invest in higher education in a different way so that millions more Americans are not cheated out of their futures and saddled with student debt that they can never repay. Mm -hmm. When it comes to people like Representative Maxwell Frost, he's playing with a rigged system and basically saying, I'm sorry, I had to choose between helping out student debt borrowers or people with Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid recipients. That's really a false choice that they want you to think. We should be cutting the military budget and using those funds to help workers instead of accepting a false premise that the Demo Republican Party forces on us. Let me share this with you guys, too. Did I? No. Because I think this is something that a lot of people really need to think about in regards to this whole uh, premise that it's either or. Now, I'm going to be kind of censoring my language because we're on YouTube, but you guys know exactly what I mean. As the pandemic spreads, polls show nearly 60% in the United States believe political system designed solely to serve rich and powerful. So this survey was taken as Congress debated a $4.5 trillion corporate bailout amid the, the <clears throat> pandemic. New polling out Wednesday backdrop in the continuing of pandemic outbreak shows that the most of the country believes the U.S. political system works only for the wealthy and elite rather than for working people. In a survey of 1,002 Americans taken by the Hill-Harris X, 
57% of respondents said that they believe the political system serves the interests of the wealthy and powerful versus 32% who said it still works for all Americans. Low income Americans were more likely than people of well off financially to say the system works for wealthy insiders, 61% to 55%. Women were 12% more likely than men and Democrat and independent voters were more likely than Republicans to say US government is designed to serve the elites. Republicans were the only subgroup in which a majority of respondents and said the system works for everyone. The poll, which had a margin of a 3.1 percentage points, was taken between March 22nd and 23rd as lawmakers debated a relief package amid the pandemic. <laughs> I got to censor my language. The, pen, the package contained $4.5 trillion slush fund for the powerful corporations while providing a one-time payment of $1,200, remember that guys, for a portion of working Americans and an expansion of sun um, some unemployment benefits. President Donald Trump signed into legislation to package days later. The bill also includes billions of dollars in loans from major corporations like Boeing, while demanding little to no meaningful oversight by Congress of the Treasury Department's distribution of the funds. Earlier in March, the Democrat-led House pushed through the Families First Corona, uh, ooh, Coronavirus Response Act, which included paid sick leave only for companies with fewer than 500 employees, leaving out workers at some of the wealthiest employers in the country. Medicare for All proponents in March noted that single-payer health care system could have protected millions of Americans from losing their health coverage as businesses laid off and furloughed employees as the disease spread. As Common Dreams reported, former Vice President Joe Biden, the Democratic president primary frontrunner, insisted Medicare for All would not have improved outcomes for Americans as the virus spread across the country. He is full of shit. Politico on Tuesday po published an article describing how the pandemic as an equalizer forcing wealthy and low-income Americans to struggle alongside one another amid medical supply and pandemic test shortages. But while the virus itself does not discriminate according to wealth, critics on social media said the U.S. political system has placed low-income workers and other marginalized people at greater risk of danger. Actually, quote, actually, the pandemic is showing how unequal our society is. That was from law professor Dorothy Roberts. It also puts people of color, poor, low income, disabled, incarcerated, unhoused, and undocumented people at greater risk. So when it comes to the money that we actually have, they rather give it to corporations or in a means so that we uh, don't, well, the corporations don't fall, right? They really give it to you so that you can give it back to corporations so that people so that they don't default. That's really what's going on. Here's the point. When it comes to relief for student debt borrowers or making sure that we have social safety nets, we can do both. Provide student debt relief, keep and expand social safety nets for people in this country. However, the corporate dictators have a fear. If we were to cancel all student debt, that would raise the question of why we can't have tuition free public colleges, universities and vocational schools. That's a little too close to communism for them. TLDR, we actually can't afford it. They just don't want you to have it.